Round two, we've got the choice. We'll play first. Certainly a keep. Don't have our second black mana for Resident Executioner, but still certainly worth a keep. All right, on offense. So we're just going to go ahead and death wind that little fella. Don't want my opponent bolstering all day. There's our second black mana, too. It's actually really nice. For the old Risen Executioner play next turn. We get to go Risen Executioner into Reach of Shadows as well. It's pretty nice, actually. But yeah, on offense seems a bit too good on turn two in a green-white deck. Bit too good. All right, let's... Uh, you know, I actually could play the Ambusher and it attacks as a 6-6 six -six next turn. Then I can't reach your shadows. Um, that's interesting, actually. I think that's actually okay. I'm going to play Executioner here. I'm probably just going to take a beating from uh, Wandering Champ. And then next turn, I'm going to go Forest and either Reach of Shadows or uh, Morph Ambusher plus Attack with Glade Watcher and Risen Executioner. So I feel like we're in a pretty decent racing spot if I do that. Otherwise, I'll just attack with the Executioner, which is also fine. Ooh, a little double strike, huh? Well, I think I found my Reach of Shadows target. You got me. Now, I could have waited a turn, but I really don't want to deal with Center Soul or some green buff spell that just straight up kills me next turn. It's actually really nice. Get to activate this, get in for seven, leave up Tread Upon. Looks like he's likely got the five mana um, destroy an attacker, blocker, bolster, but I would say him having no creatures on board makes me perfectly okay with attacking into that. I mean, it just seems like he's got to have that. Not making a play on his turn, leaving up five mana. Enduring victory is my guess. There is no kill shot anymore. And he did it on the guy that I can bring back, which is also kind of interesting, but uh, acceptable nonetheless. I don't even have another creature in the yard, which means I do not have to pay that much mana for it. So next turn, I think we're just going to be flipping this guy up and attacking for eight or nine, rather. So does he have a second Enduring Victory? That is the question. Um. Oh, wait. Oh, whenever another permanent. I see. Good to know. For some reason, I thought he got his own value. That's probably too good. <laughs> Flip up as a 6-6 six, six for 5. Yeah, it's probably uh, a little bit better than an uncommon. I mean, I do have lethal on this turn, which is nice. But I'm not going to uh, play into a removal spell that way. 
My, I mean, I could tread upon and then attack with the Glade Watcher for lethal, but I, I feel pretty confident in just swinging with... Oh, yeah, I should have actually... All right, I screwed up there. So I should have gotten Risen Executioner back, but maybe it all works out anyway. I'll just do that and then re I'll play Herd Chaser Dragon. All right, still worked out okay. Now I just have a bunch of creatures on board, and I can't think of any white board wipes that weren't in uh, cons. All right, so I gave, I guess I gave my opponent a little more information than I needed to, but that's okay. So we know our opponent's got Anafenza and the five drop uh, removal spell, and not much else. Um, Vile, I mean, is a way to deal with Anafenza. Problem, of course, being it's a little bit slower than you need it to be for Anafenza. Anafenza on turn two is just pretty brutal. It's going to be tough. Do have outs to it, no doubt, but it's going to be tough if he resolves it on turn two. Is there anything I think is bad against my opponent? That's a good question. I don't think so. I think he's I think we just need to see more. We really did not see that much of my opponent's deck, so why don't we just go to game two here? Alright, I think gotta mull the old one lander. Keep it. Potential value to be reaped from Sultai Emissary and uh, Salt Road Ambusher. Only if I manifest an actual creature, but we'll see if that happens. There's a chance. Well, no Anafens is a good sign. All right, what's it going to be? The counter, counter bear, or looks like the searching for the land. So let's see if our opponent's splashing a third color or just trying to get some more lands, planes. All right, maybe he just couldn't play Anafenza on turn two. Hand of Silumgar is an okay draw, but not that good on this board state, so I think we'll just drop the Emissary, which I think is going to keep his... I think either one keeps his Zynok Guide back, honestly, but I'd rather just play the Emissary anyway. Maybe I can, I don't know, attack with it next turn or something. Actually, maybe it made more sense to play the Hand of Silmgar, because that way if I attack and he blocks with Guide, I instinct, but that's not even a good trade, so screw it. I mean, I'll, I'll trade a guide for the front half of my uh, my emissary. I'm actually okay with that. Not interested. All right, no plays either. Also interesting. Guess we just swing and drop a salt road ambusher. It's kind of an expensive Megamorph for just getting a 4-4, four four, to be honest. I mean, it's certainly a good card, especially in our deck that has a good amount of Megamorph, but it's an expensive, uh, it's an expensive Unmorph. All right, well, I guess the kind of funny thing is we can still get value off of that, whether it be Exploit or uh, the Megamorphing. All right. So I kind of don't want to play Hand of Silumgar here. I think we'll just play the Dragon, get better bang for our buck. And it can actually attack and block an Inoc Guide, so it seems better.
Get to leave up tread upon. I guess that's good. Can't be countered. Flying lifelink. Can't cast spells during your turn. Well, that seems pretty busted, especially since Ruthless Instincts is only able to kill that uh, defensively. So that seems like a pretty difficult card to possibly beat. Well, I guess that works. But going to have to... Uh, draw a land. Can't cast spells during your turn. It's so brutal against Ruthless Instincts. <laughs> uh, I guess we pass. I mean, I can swing with hand. He blocks with guide. And then I tread upon, but I don't like it. I think we just look for a fifth land so we can kill his Dragon Lord. Wow. Well, I guess we get one turn. Can't cast spells during your turn. That's so brutal. I guess Ruthless Instincts wouldn't have got me around uh, Battle Mastery anyway. Well, it looks like Pinion Feast is coming in, huh? Jeez. Fifth land, please. No center soul is good. All right, can't do much about that. Um, hmm. Guess we'll just drop crew shock and pass. One card left in our opponent's hand. Kind of want to keep the ruthless instincts in case he's got another dragon I got to deal with. That way I can get some reach out of my Death Toucher. Well, I guess out of anything. Out of my Emissary, because it gives Death Touch. Conifer Strider. Yeah, it's fine. And a Wandering Champ. Okay. No cards left in hand. Rune Scarred Bear is actually pretty good in this spot. So I can swing with Crew Shock. He probably doesn't block, and then I can drop Bear. It's probably the best. If he does block, I just tread upon. Get some good mileage out of that. Well, I'm certainly fine with that double block. So now we've got uh, Hand of Silumgar block for Conifer Strider. Or uh, Ereshkigal Cleric, maybe, and Sultai Emissary for Conifer Strider. Butcher's Glee. Well, well, well. Opponent's at 20. Guess we swing these three. All 
right, it's Butcher's Glee. Get a little lifelink action. Kill that thing. Deal some damage. Um, yeah, we're in pretty good shape now. All right, got Ruthless Instincts for the Conifer Strider. So I can do it on my bear and then regen. All right, so beat the old uh, Dragonlord Jamoka. Man, that guy is... Pretty badass. Can't be countered. Flying lifelink. Can't cast spells during your turn. Jeez. All at the low, low cost of six mana for a 5-7 flying lifelink. That guy is insane. Well, happy we beat the old battle mastery Dramoka. Um, we'll see you in round three.